Okay, so everything's done running, and I uh, pasted the variables into this uh, the dashboard, and you can see that energy generation is dominated. Oops, it's dominated by the horizontal PVs, which makes sense both because it's unobstructed; there's no shadows on it. This one here, and because it's a much larger area than either this vertical here or this horizontal here. So there's a way of accounting for this. I've got two of these horizontals, and so I only modeled one of them, but for, and it's, I forget which is which now. This is called PV2. So PV2, I actually want to have not a multiplier of one, but a multiplier of two. And that will now double the, the output. If you notice, that went from 1,000 kilowatt hours to 2,000 kilowatt hours. Um, and for PV3, which is my vertical fin right here, I want uh, not one of them, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. And so I'm going to multiply by seven. Uh, and now you see that... Uh, my the the contribution of these significantly increased. Now, the PV3 is the green one, um, and PV2 is I think it's the black one, which we can't see right now. Um, and so this is an interesting thing that you probably come up with depending on the order in which you graph them. If you right click on the graph and press Select Data, you can adjust the order of these. So I'm going to move PV1 up. So now I can see that PV1 um, is, is in this zone. It's just that it's basically moving the order in which it's showing them. Uh, and you're probably going to need to do this in order to see the data better. If I, if I accidentally had PV2 on top, then I wouldn't be able to see either of the other two data sets. Select the best order to, to best visualize the data. In this case, I'm going to choose this one. Um, and I can see that the black one, PV2 and PV3, are actually making just about the same amount of energy over the course of the year, but at different times. So PV2 is making more energy during the summer, and PV3 is making more energy during the winter. And this is interesting if you start to think about the time of use and the school year and things like this, that um, you could actually make more energy when the class is in session. This makes a big difference if you're thinking about cost because the uh, the way that utilities generally reimburse you, you get you um, pay more money to um, buy the energy than you do to sell the energy. So if you can use all the energy, it's actually worth worth more than selling it back. Um, so using it real time, like the green ones do here, is actually preferable to. Um, storing it on the grid, which you see in uh, the PV2. You can see, actually, in this particular case, the vertical fins are working much better than the horizontal is, um, and this one on the roof is is uh, working even better than that. To truly see how well it's doing, you'd have to do it on a watt per square meter basis, um, but I'm not going to require you to do that for this. If you'd like to, then that, um, that's sort of the first uh, set of runs that we did where we looked at one square meter of panel will we'll help you to figure that out. So this is um, how to model the, the number of PVs that you have and the um, different orientations. Please don't try and do more than three at a time uh, just because of the way that the model is set up and the IDF file. It'll make it a lot more complex for you and be difficult to visualize. So stick with three at a time. In the energy use panel, or sheet, this is looking at all of the energy uses for um, both generation and consumption. So if I zoom out here, the above the line here is energy generation, and below the line is energy use. Um, keep in mind that these axes are dynamic, and so they're not necessarily the same units. It's very important for you to adjust these so that they, they look similar. I want to draw your attention to right here is a multiplier for PVs. And this is not connected to the multiplier 
that you used in the renewables tab. So see this is 1, 2, and 7, and this is 70, 1, and 1. So you need to manually uh, change this again. 1, 2, 7. This will dramatically change this graph. So instead of 70 um, PVs, now we've just got that 1, and that's uh, changing our number here. We're still generating much more energy than we're using in this particular case. And actually, you can see that there's a um, this upper green zone is the wind turbines. This is um, equipment, process, uh, lighting. There's hot water up here um, that there's very little hot water use in this zone. Um, ventilation, cooling, and then heating. So you, this is averaged over a two week period, so it's relatively smooth. You can see the setback for the summer operation in effect here. There's also a summary here on the left. This is the total for the whole year. So you can see in this case, we're using about 18,000 kilowatt hours and um, we are generating about 35,000 kilowatt hours. The same as uh, you saw for the PVs, the multipliers here, they're multipliers for wind turbines right here. So let's make this zero so we can see what we're doing a little better. Now this totally, this drops the renewable energy use um, and it's actually matching in terms of power pretty well. In terms of overall consumption, we're generating a little bit less energy than we're using. So if I wanted to make this zero net energy, I could try to decrease the, the loads or increase the generation. I've kind of maxed out my facade right now in terms of the photovoltaics, but you know, for instance, what if I took off all of these fins and overhangs and put photovoltaics on this vertical facade and even on this north-facing vertical facade, what would happen then? There's, there's other things to explore. What if I canted this um, at, a, at an angle? How would that change the performance, et cetera, et cetera?